Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins as a train arrives at Firestone Station in Los Angeles, and a thief named Neil McCauley gets off, disguised as a paramedic. He goes to a hospital unnoticed, wearing the paramedic uniform. Meanwhile, his friend Chris buys explosives from a store with cash. On the same day, a detective named Vincent Hanna leaves his wife after a morning together. His stepdaughter, Lauren, has a tough time, before her mom leaves to meet Vincent. Neil and his friends plan to rob an armored car. They wear masks and set up their vehicle strategically, with driver Trejo. When the armored car approaches, Neil blocks its path with the stolen ambulance. Another friend, Michael Cherido, drives a tow truck to ram the armored car. The car flips over, and the robbers quickly move in with guns. They blast open the car doors, and grab the guards, keeping them at gunpoint. They have a limited time before the police arrive. While searching for valuables, one of the guards doesn't follow orders, and gets hurt by one of the robbers, named Wayne Gro. The others scold Wayne Gro for being reckless. After finding the envelope they were looking for, the crew heads back to the ambulance to leave. Suddenly, Wayne Gro, feeling challenged by one of the guards, shoots the guard in the face, killing him. Neil quickly shoots the second guard as he reaches for a weapon. Cherido takes care of the last guard, shooting him multiple times, ending with a fatal shot to the head. They rush back to the ambulance, angry at Wayne Gro for his reckless action. As they speed away, police cars race towards the scene. The first few cars don't see the spike strip and crash, creating chaos. The police scramble to stop more cars from coming in. Meanwhile, Neil and his crew abandon the ambulance a few blocks away, and switch to a station wagon. They leave a firebomb in the ambulance to destroy any evidence, as they make their escape. Later at night, Neil meets with Nate, who informs him that the stolen envelope contains valuable bearer bonds, from a company owned by a shady businessman, named Roger Van Zandt. Nate agrees to set up a meeting to exchange the bonds for cash. He also tells Neil about another job that could bring in $10 million, arranged by a man named Kelso. Neil agrees to the meeting with Kelso, but refuses to discuss what went wrong with the heist. LAPD Lt. Vincent Hanna and his team arrive at the crime scene to investigate. They identify the stolen vehicles, and note the nickname Slick mentioned by Cherido. Hanna recognizes the heist as the work of professionals, and orders his team to gather information from informants and fences. He also asks his team to check the alias Slick with the FBI, even though he suspects it might not lead to anything substantial. At a truck stop diner, Neil meets up with the rest of the crew and Wayne Gro. He informs them that Wayne Gro won't be getting a share, because of his actions. He briefly beats Wayne Gro, expressing his anger over the guard's killings, which could lead to a serious investigation. As they leave, Neil tries to kill Wayne Gro, but is stopped by Cherido, who spots a police car nearby. They watch nervously as the police car passes without noticing them. When Neil turns back, Wayne Gro has disappeared, leaving them searching the area fruitlessly. Meanwhile, Chris argues with his wife Charlene at home, about the small amount of money he brought back from the heist. He reveals he used some to pay off his gambling debts, which leads to a heated exchange. Frustrated, he storms out of the house. The next day, Detective Hannah and Drucker raid the chop shop of their informant, Albert Torina. After some tough questioning, Albert reveals that his brother Richard has information, and will meet Neil at a club in Koreatown. Neil meets with Kelso, who suggests a new heist at a bank. Kelso explains that they can shut down the alarm system before arriving, making it possible to steal $10 million. Initially skeptical, Neil eventually agrees to the convincing plan. Nate provides Neil with Van Zant's contact information. Returning home to his apartment, Neil finds Chris there, and they talk about their personal lives. He reminds Chris of a prisonmate's advice to not get too attached, always ready to leave everything behind at a moment's notice. They decide to first get their money from Van Zant for the stolen bonds, then go for Kelso's bank job. Neil arranges the bond exchange with Van Zant. Later at a payphone, he instructs Van Zant's employee to set up a meeting point for the exchange. While waiting, he sees Charlene with another man at a hotel. When Van Zant's bookie calls back with a meeting location, at a drive-in movie theater, Neil confronts Charlene, warning her to give Chris another chance. He meets with the drop-in man at the drive-in theater, as arranged. The drop man arrives, but unbeknownst to Neil, an assassin is hiding in the back of the pickup truck, ready to kill him. Chris, stationed on the rooftop with a rifle, spots the assassin and warns Neil through his headset. Neil reacts quickly, flooring the car in reverse, pinning the assassin against the pickup, and injuring him. Chris shoots at the pickup, shattering the windshield, while the assassin fires wildly. Neil returns fire through his windshield, 
hitting the assassin. Chris then takes a shot that spins the assassin around, and Neil delivers a fatal shot, before running over him. Cherito steps out and finishes off the driver of the pickup truck with a shotgun. Neil checks the package, finding only scrap paper. He calls Van Zant, cancels the exchange, and subtly threatens him. Unbeknownst to them, Wayne Grow has started working for Van Zant. They also don't know that he is a serial killer, targeting young prostitutes. Hannah, at a party with his fellow detectives, is called to a motel, where they find one of Wayne Grow's victims stuffed into a garbage can. Hannah comforts the victim's mother, who is deeply affected by the tragedy. Neil, Chris and Cherito move on to another heist, at a precious metals repository. Cherito deactivates the alarm system, and Chris works on cracking a safe, while Neil keeps watch outside. Unbeknownst to them, Hannah and his team are observing from hidden vans across the street, using infrared monitoring equipment. During the stakeout, a SWAT team member accidentally makes noise in their van, alerting Neil, who senses something is off, and quickly orders his crew to abort the mission. They leave empty-handed. Hannah decides not to pursue them, knowing that a simple breaking and entering charge would carry a lighter sentence than theft. Hannah tracks Neil and pulls him over on a freeway, inviting him to coffee. They discuss their dedication to their respective jobs, and the limitations of their personal lives. Hannah describes his failing marriage, and Neil confides that he is similarly isolated. Though they admit their respect for one another, both acknowledge that they will kill the other if necessary. This encounter raises the stakes for both Neil and Hannah, setting the stage for a final confrontation between the meticulous thief and the relentless detective. Neil Cherito and Chris meticulously execute their plan to rob the Far East National Bank. Inside the bank, they blend in with the crowd, disguised in business suits, to hide their weapons. Neil and Cherito position themselves strategically, while Chris waits in line at a teller's desk. At a pre-arranged signal, Cherito coughs, indicating it's time to put on their ski masks. Instantly, Chris strikes, hitting the nearest guard with a small weapon, and taking him down. Neil and Cherito reveal their assault rifles, commanding everyone to the ground. They quickly secure the guards, tying their hands with zip ties, and disarming them. Standing atop the teller windows, Neil assures the frightened customers that they won't be harmed, and that their personal money is insured by the government. He then forcefully takes the vault key from an uncooperative bank manager, and hands it to Chris. While Neil and Cherito maintain control of the lobby, Chris unlocks the vault doors, revealing stacks of cash. Chris starts filling gym bags with the money, packing them tightly, as Neil and Cherito keep watch. The bags quickly fill up, each containing a substantial $4 million. Chris prepares three bags in total, two for Neil, and one for himself. Once the bags are ready, Neil passes one to Cherito, who removes his ski mask, puts on sunglasses, and confidently walks towards the exit. The plan seems flawless, as they smoothly execute each step of the heist, leaving the bank with the stolen fortune. Outside, Breeden, the substitute getaway driver, waits anxiously in the car, unaware of the intensity inside the bank. The crew moves swiftly, their precision and coordination a testament to their experience and skill in such high-stakes operations. As Cherito calmly walks out of the bank with one of the bags, the success of their heist seems assured. The tension rises as they prepare to make their escape, knowing that the police will soon be on their trail. With millions in stolen cash in hand, they head towards the waiting getaway vehicle, ready to vanish into the city. The heist appears to have been a resounding success, for now. Acting on a tip from Van Zant's bodyguard, the LAPD intercepts the crew as they leave the bank, leading to a massive shootout, Breeden and Cherito getting killed. Neil manages to escape with Chris, taking him to a doctor named Bob for treatment. Bob attends to Chris's wound, and Neil arranges for Nate to pick Chris up and keep him hidden, until they can find a new way to escape Los Angeles. Neil however is adamant that Chris should leave without Charlene, due to the high risk involved. He suspects Trejo of betrayal, and plans to confront him. Arriving at Trejo's house, he is met with a tragic scene. Trejo lies severely injured, and his wife is already dead. Trejo, in his final moments, reveals that it was Wayne Grow and Van Zant who were responsible. Enraged and seeking answers, Neil heads to Van Zant's house. Finding Van Zant watching a hockey game, Neil confronts him by smashing a patio chair through the window, and pointing his gun at him. He demands to know Wayne Grow's whereabouts. Van Zant claims ignorance, but Neil, fueled by anger and betrayal, takes revenge by eliminating him. Neil and Chris are running out of time and have to act fast to stay safe. They're determined to get revenge on Wayne Grow, the one who betrayed them all. Meanwhile, the police move Charlene and her son Dominic to a safe place. Sergeant Drucker tells Charlene she could be in trouble for helping her husband's crimes. 
but she refuses to betray Neil, even though she knows the consequences. Chris, recovering from being shot, goes home. His wife warns him quietly about the police. They understand the danger they're in. He changes his appearance, and manages to fool the police with a fake ID. Neil breaks his own rule by asking his girlfriend, Edie, to leave the country with him. They are planning to go to New Zealand, but he learns about Wayne Grow's location, and decides to take care of him first. Hannah finds out where Wayne Grow is staying, and tries to bait Neil into a trap. Seeing Edie waiting in Neil's car, Hannah gets suspicious. Neil realizes Hannah has spotted him, and leaves Edie behind to escape. A tense chase happens at the airport between them. Neil tries to outsmart Hannah using the runway lights, but Hannah knows his moves. In a crucial moment, he shoots Neil in the shoulder. Despite being injured, Neil keeps running, trying to hide. Hannah follows closely, both in a dangerous game of pursuit. When the lights blind Hannah for a moment, Neil tries to strike. But Hannah, using his instincts, shoots Neil in the chest. As Neil knows he's dying, Hannah comes close, and they share a moment of understanding. Neil accepts his fate, glad he won't go back to prison. The two men share a final moment, before Neil dies, ending the intense chase and the story of redemption. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.